There are families out there searching Of loved ones lost There's a lifetime of hurting Praying one day they'll find The missing This is a recent and upsetting case about five-year-old little boy who was found in a dumpster and was beaten to death by a 15-year-old boy and a grown man. I want to warn you before you listen to this case, it is so awful that me and my husband both cried after reading the affidavit. It is heartbreaking and disturbing how evil people can be. So viewer discretion is advised. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Shed. This is the place we discuss breaking cases as well as rarely discussed true crime right here in my Murder She Shed. If you would like to hear more of my cases, I usually have a case twice weekly, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can keep up with this gal in her she shit. All right, guys, let's begin. But I want to warn you that, again, that this is some evil, evil stuff this little boy went through. But I just felt like his case needed to be told. I feel like he needs justice, and I feel like word needs to get out what these monsters did to this little baby. And I just want his family and him to find justice in this. So I wanted to tell his story. Let's begin. On October 25th, five-year-old Prince Rashawn McCree from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was reported missing by his mother. He ended up not going to school that morning after he woke up around 7 with a sore throat and some coughing. Prince then played with his mom's cell phone until he fell back to sleep in his bed. Prince's mom and dad were sleeping too. Prince woke up around 9 and gave his mom her cell phone back. He told his mom he is going to go down to the basement to play video games. Several people live in this home, but she trusted all of them. She never thought her worst nightmare would happen that day. So Prince's mom and dad fell back to sleep while he went down to play the video games. Prince, his mom Jordan, his dad Darren, and two siblings lived on the second floor and attic area of the home, located at 2411 North 54th Street. First floor is occupied by the homeowner, Michelle, her daughter, and her two teenage boys. The boys actually both have a bedroom on the second floor beside Prince's mom and dad. So they slept up there, and I guess they live on the first with their mom. One of those boys is the suspect, 15-year-old Eric Mendoza. Prince's family was longtime friends with Michelle, the house owner, and her sons. So she trusted them. 27-year-old David Petura lived in the basement. David is the other suspect and is a work associate of the homeowner, Michelle. At 1, Prince's mother, Jordan, woke up and was hungry. So she asked to borrow Michelle's car to go get food. 15-year-old Eric rode with her to get food. After returning home, Jordan went upstairs and woke her husband, Darren, and then she walked down to the basement to try to find Prince because they were going to eat. She walked down to the basement and noticed how dark it was. So she flipped on the lights and she seen no one. She walked back upstairs and asked Darren if he had seen Prince. And he said no. She then went to Eric and his brother's room where she found David and Eric's brother playing video games. David told Jordan that he had not seen Prince all day. Not at all. Even though the boy was supposed to come down in the basement and play video games with him. He hadn't seen him, which would turn out to be a complete lie. She began to panic and search the entire residence. She knew that this was unusual for Prince. He never left the house. He was a good boy that always minded. Jordan, Darren, and Michelle then drove Michelle's car all over the neighborhood looking for Prince. They still did not locate him, so Jordan called the police. After arriving at the house, Jordan escorted the detective inside. When he entered the basement, he noticed blood on the cement floor beside a carpet runner. David noticed what the detective had seen and tried to cover the blood with the carpet runner. That's not guilt. I don't know what is. The officer then asked him why blood was on the floor of the basement where he lived. He said him and Eric had been roughhousing earlier 
and it had caused him to have a bloody nose. The officer then noticed a comforter and also a blanket with blood on it in the basement. David was then interviewed and he claimed the events that day were just a little fuzzy. He said he woke up between 6 to 7 and played video games until 11. Then him and Eric decided to go for a walk and ended up walking to Jacoba's Park. I'm not sure how you say that, but a park near the area, which would turn out to be a complete lie. After authorities looked at David's phone, he had been nowhere near the park that day. As David was being interviewed, authorities noticed a large amount of blood on David's right leg. David was arrested and authorities were able to get a search warrant and brought dogs into the house to search. The dog alerted to the smell of decomp on three sweatshirts located at the base of the basement stairs, which later David would be seen on surveillance video wearing that same sweatshirt and carrying a garbage bag. Then, on October 26, the morning after David had been arrested, he was questioned again and stated Prince is not alive. He then told authorities Prince's body could be found behind a bar in a dumpster. He at first told a couple of different stories where he said that he had no involvement with Prince's death and that 15-year-old Eric had been the only one who had murdered the 5-year-old little boy. And later, he finally told the truth. And the truth is a complete nightmare. And this is where the warning definitely needs to be brought into this story. Because I want to tell you, my heart broke for his parents. My heart broke for this little boy. This is the most heartbreaking story. I don't even know. There's no words to describe how they could feel. I honestly, I honestly, I probably shouldn't say this, but they wouldn't end up in prison because, well, let's just say they would never make it to prison. I'll leave it at that, if that been my little boy. Now, here's the story of what happened to Little Prince. While David and Eric were in the basement playing video games, Prince came down to the basement. Eric in the past had discussed that he would like to kill the little boy. Eric began choking Prince, and during the process, David left the room briefly. When he returned, Eric was still choking Prince, and David did not even try to stop it from happening. He didn't care. After Prince became motionless, and David thought he might be deceased, he then told Eric, we have to clean up. They then bound Prince's arms and legs with duct tape. They put a rag in his little mouth and then taped it in order to quiet Prince's screams just in case he was not deceased, which he wasn't, because Prince began to regain consciousness. And so David struck Prince with his fist repeatedly, which he said was to quiet him. When that didn't work, Eric stomped on his little head several times. Prince continued to whimper, so David grabbed a 30-pound dumbbell from his bedroom and dropped it on Prince's head. I told you it's awful, and it only gets worse. At this point, they believed that Prince was dead, so they began wrapping his body in multiple garbage bags. After he was in the bags, they heard another whimper. So Eric and David decided they would take turns striking him with a golf club while he was still in the garbage bags. During the process, the garbage bags began to rip and a significant amount of blood started leaking out. So they decided to bag his body in several more trash bags. Oh guys, this little boy was alive inside these bags. I told you it's a heartbreaking case. David then picked up Prince's body inside the bags and carried him outside, thinking he was deceased. After exiting the house, they then heard Prince whimper again. They laid the bag on the ground, and David grabbed a concrete pedestal for a bird bath and dropped it on Prince's head twice. After this, Prince made no noise. You know how heavy those are? Picking those things up, they're so heavy. And they dropped it on this little boy's head. This little boy was tortured, just tortured to death for no reason, for no reason at all. This is when authorities would find surveillance video of Eric and David carrying Prince's little body inside of those trash bags, walking down the sidewalk, and finally dumping it in a dumpster located behind the bar. 
They made sure the garbage bags containing Prince's body were covered by other garbage inside the dumpster. Upon returning to the residence, Eric cleaned the scene by using soap and water and a rag to clean the blood off the basement floor. Luckily, these monsters didn't get away with this because they did not clean the basement good. And so this cop was observant enough to see the blood that was on the floor. David originally wanted to walk to a trail that leads to a sewer line where he wanted to dump his body, but he said Prince's body was too heavy. Eric, while interviewed, admitted wanting to kill someone and had made several other stabbing attempts on random people that he had just passed by on the street. It's just pure evil. On October 23rd, he had stabbed three people throughout the day. He said after each stabbing, he just felt a rush. He also said he stabbed these people because he had nothing better to do. Near 42nd and North, he ran up behind a man and stabbed him in the back. At 35th and center, he stabbed a man in the shoulder from behind. Then he stabbed a woman in the back of the neck at a bus stop near Center and Sherman. They all lived. But when asked what he would say to his stabbing victims, he told authorities he would say, Sorry, but you are alive. Prince's little body was found in that trash dumpster with injuries to his body from head to toe. His skull had been fractured and his cause of death was ruled as multiple blunt force injuries. This little boy was killed just because a 15-year-old boy felt the urge to kill. And I believe the 27-year-old killed just because he was tired of Prince interrupting his video game playing. He stated during the interview that he was tired of feeling obligated to watch and entertain Prince. David Petura could face two life sentences plus 12 and a half years in prison and a fine of 25000 Eric Mendoza was charged as an adult, thank God, and he faces three additional counts of reckless use of a dangerous weapon endangering safety. He could face two life sentences plus 65 years in prison and a fine of 100000 Prince's mom's cousin created a GoFundMe account to raise money to provide Prince with a funeral and headstone that he so very much deserves, and to help his mom and dad with whatever they may need during this difficult time. I'm going to leave the GoFundMe account in the comments below. Prince Rashawn McCree was such a happy little boy who loved his brother and sister very much. He just started kindergarten this fall. And he also just lost his second baby tooth. Prince loved Transformers, Spider-Man, Fortnite, Roblox, school learning, and Baby Shark when he was younger. I hate that such evil resides in this world. And this handsome little guy lost his life because of it. Rest in peace, precious Prince. You're now in heaven with our heavenly King. And guys, I told you this case was extremely heartbreaking. And I can imagine what the family's going through right now. And I just pray for the family and the loved ones of this little boy and his little siblings that have to be explained to that the brother is dead. These guys were just pure monsters. There's no other words for it. Just pure monsters. And I do pray that they find the justice they so deserve. And because this case was so sad, I couldn't even find myself to make bloopers. And you know... I always try to make the bloopers to cheer y'all up, but I couldn't even cheer myself up after I discussed this case and researched it. It was just too hard. So, I'm just going to wish y'all a good weekend. It's almost there. And I love y'all. And make sure and come back and see me at the Murder She Shed. Have a great, blessed weekend. Go out and be a blessing to others. I love y'all. Bye. I've been waiting on you to come home I've been calling you on the phone I was getting worried, my heart beating fast Thinking you were in trouble as each hour passed